Hey, how's it going guys? JP back at you once again with another DVD and Blu-ray update. I made this one specifically for you guys, the uh, subscribers of mine and the friends of mine. I've been wanting to kind of get back into the YouTube community, the collecting community, the horror community, but I've just kind of been out of it lately. I don't really make videos, I don't really watch videos, I don't really comment or talk to anybody and I really kind of miss it, so this is kind of my attempt of getting back into it a bit. Uh, and we'll start with a DVD update. I said this in my last update as well, but, you know, um, things happen and, uh, you know, life gets in the way. But I am definitely going to try to be more on here. I just miss it. It looks a lot different now. It seems like people are not as connected as they once was. But that could just be me looking in from the outside and seeing things kind of different. So, with that said, this DVD and Blu-ray update... It's not the biggest, but it is enough to warrant an update. I just was kind of uh, slow the past, you know, few months. Didn't really pick up a whole lot. Um, grabbed some of the cheaper titles, and um, you know, I, I have a lot to watch, so I haven't really been grabbing a whole bunch. I've kind of just been sitting back and you know watching stuff. So doing the podcast stuff like that. But let's get into this DVD and Blu-ray Blu update. We have a lot more DVDs than Blu-rays this time, so we'll start with the DVDs. And uh, yeah, first up we have Troll and Troll 2. So both of these films I believe I have seen. I feel that I've seen them, but I can't remember them. So I might not have seen them. I'm sure I did rent them in the video store days. It almost feels like I've had two of I remember the covers and stuff like that. Um, but it's entirely possible that I didn't. So I was a little hesitant to pick up this uh, disc because it is an MGM and it is a double feature and we know that the DVD Blu-ray gods have a very sick and twisted sense of humor and they just love for us to pick up a old MGM release and then the very next day they have Scream Factory announce a Blu-ray title uh, of that said title that you just picked up. So I was a little hesitant, it happened to me, it happened to Moods, it happens to a bunch of you guys out there with these MGM titles. You're scared to pick them up because you know Scream Factory, somebody else is probably going to announce them soon, but I felt like I needed to see these films recently. I really wanted to see them and I got this for under $5, so I felt like it was worth the chance, but, and also I heard Scream Factory say that they don't have these titles a few times, so... Maybe I'm safe for now, who knows. Um, but yeah, Troll and Troll 2. Uh, I grabbed it for cheap and uh, I'm gonna check them out sooner rather than later. Next up, we have the real reason for picking up the Troll 1 and 2 DVD, and that's Best Worst Movie. This is a documentary, I've been wanting to check it out. I got it super cheap on Amazon, it was like $5. And. I don't remember the original Troll 2 film and Troll, so I decided, hey, I probably should see them before I watch this documentary. And, you know, Troll 2 has, like, the one of the biggest cult followings out there, and I remember when this uh, documentary was being made because on YouTube, one of the contributors to this documentary had a YouTube channel and re would review movies and stuff, and they were always talking about Troll 2. And... I always wanted to check this out, so uh, I love The Green Case, finally going to watch all three of these films, the first two Troll films, and Best Worst Movie, so we'll get to that pretty soon. After that, we have a film that I got for, you know, $2 or something like that, a dollar, and that's uh, The Forsaken. I've never seen this, I don't even know what it's about. I thought it was a, um, oh, it's a vampire movie, it says right on the uh, cover. Okay, so I thought it was a werewolf film, but I guess it's a vampire film. Uh, cool, you know, I, I, I'm always looking f looking to update my vampire collection. I like collecting, you know, subgenres, and my vampire subgenres are lacking a bit. So, um, probably not the best film, but we'll check it out. After that, we have another MGM, and that is Burnt Offerings. But I couldn't pass this one up because this one's pretty pricey. And this was, you know, literally a couple bucks at a actual video store. I went to this video store I used to go to as a kid, and they're still renting films. So I, you know, signed up, made a membership, and I seen that they had a couple 
uh, horror films on the wall that they were selling, they were no longer renting, and this is where I got a couple of these. So I think I got all of them for like $10 or something like that, so they were really, really cheap. Uh, Burn Offerings, I've actually never seen it, but I've heard really good things, so excited to check that one out. After that, we have another one here, and uh, this one was at the uh, Walmart, you know, Walmart, I, I grab stuff from there every now and then. Um, I just spend so much time over there after work and on break and stuff like that that I just am obsessed with looking at the same titles over and over again. Like, God, I love Tuesdays there because it's like, at least I have like five new titles to look at instead of the same shit. I really wish they would cycle through their dump bins f way faster because it's the same shit in there every day and it drives me crazy. But Anyway, the film I'm talking about is The House That October Built. This is one that a lot of people had on their list of best of 2014, their top 10 of 2014, and I didn't get to see this one still. Um, so I will check this one out sooner or later. I've heard good things, so I'm excited to check it out, and it's got a cool title. Next up is another one that I got at that uh, video store, and that is uh, Dead Birds. Um, I'm not sure what this one is. It looks like a western, which is super exciting to me because I always talk to Moods about how there is not enough Western horror films. So this seems to be like one. Looking forward to checking that out. After that, we got a Big Lots buy. Man, I just love Big Lots, but once again, they just don't cycle through their releases too much, and uh, you can't really find a bunch of horror stuff all the time. So it's it's hit and miss but uh, every you know couple weeks I'll, I'll stop by and, and see something new and uh, I grabbed deliverance this isn't horror per se but it's definitely one of those um, on the border uh, subjective horror ish films where you just feel like um, what's happening in it is so hardcore that it it's almost in horror and I do consider this kind of a horror film um, because it, it, it actually kind of you know you know, it was horrifying when I seen it as a kid. So, uh, Deliverance. Really interested to check this one out again. It's been a very long time. Um, I'm actually been looking for, uh, Surviving the Game with Ice T. Um, it, it's obviously not that hard to find, but I'll probably do like a double feature of that or something. They just kind of seem like they feel similar. Um, people, you know, trapped in the woods and stuff with, uh, crazy people after them. Uh, so yeah. After that, we have another Big Lots find. We have uh, The Grudge 2, and I've passed on this and The Grudge 3 so many times, but $3, I finally had to just grab it uh, because I've literally seen this in my face so many times throughout the years, and I was like, at least if I have it, then I won't have to debate it every time it pops up in the wild. So uh, I, hate, I, I, hate, I hate The Grudge. Um, I don't know. It's not a bad film. I just I just don't like the whole American remake of the Japanese ghost stories. I like The Ring, but that's as far as it goes with my likes for those type of films. Uh, but I've never even seen The Grudge 2, so uh, I'll check it out eventually. After that, we have another sequel here, and that is Sharknado 2. Um, I finally grabbed this one. It's been at Walmart forever, and it was like 10 bucks. and I seen they lowered it to 750 so I was like, ah, hell, why not? 750 is way too much for this film, by the way. Um, but, I don't know, man. Walmart gets me, because I'm so bored in there all the time. Uh, you know, sometimes I have to wait there uh, after work and stuff like that. So, I, I spend a lot of time there, and it just, it just bores the hell out of me, so I end up buying stuff I don't even want. Yeah, so, um, Sharknado 2, I still haven't even seen the first one, I do own it, I also grabbed that at Walmart, so, eventually I'll check them out, I guess. After that, we have another Walmart pickup, and this one I just thought was a pretty cool little four-pack here, and I wish they would release more of these, and that is, uh, TV Guide Spotlight Made for TV Disasters. Uh, this is, of course, put out by the wonderful Mill Creek. And we have Flood, A River's Rampage from 1998, Aftershock, Earthquake in New, Year, New York, 1999, oh my god, I can't talk, uh, Tornado from 1996, that one actually stars Bruce Campbell, and Flood from 2006. So, I mean, 
I, I just could not pass these up. I believe it was only like $5. It might have been a little bit more, though. I just really was excited to see all these TV movies in one little collection. Not so much horror, but it's disaster. It kind of fits in there. Uh, you know, made for TV, man. I love those type of films. And I grew up watching them, so I always try to grab them when I see them. So next up here we have... Uh, a film released by Dark Sky, and uh, I've never seen this, never really even heard of it, but we are covering it on a future podcast, so I decided to pick it up, and that is The Centerfold Girls. Uh, so yeah, I don't know anything about it, but I will soon. After that, we have a four-pack, and that is The All Night Marathon Volume 2. Actually, I cannot believe I didn't own this still. Um... I've seen a couple of these films in here, Contamination 7, which I believe is actually kind of linked to the Troll films in a weird way. It's been released under like the title of Troll 3 before, um, or Troll 4, so who knows. Uh, yeah, we have The Dungeon Masters, Cellar Dweller, Contamination 7, and Catacombs. Contamination 7 I used to watch all the time on VHS. It was under the title uh, Creepers, I believe. But yeah, um, pretty bad movie, but I, I'm excited to revisit it. This is an awesome set. I'm glad to grab this finally. And uh, if you don't own it, you definitely should. After that, we have uh, a film put out by Cheesy Flicks, and that is 1972's The Legend of Boggy Creek. I did watch this, and I really just couldn't get into it. Uh, I, I thought it was okay. A little above average, but... I don't know if it, it also, it could have been the, this was a pretty bad transfer on here, um, but I, I don't feel like that was the reason. I, I just didn't really get invested in this one, so I was a little disappointed because I've heard such good things over the years, uh, so I, I didn't really love The Legend of Boggy Creek. After that, I just want to give a huge shout out to the guy uh, who sent me this. I'm going to put his link in the description down below. And the next film is Cemetery Man. Thank you, Zach. My God. I've been after this forever. And he just sent me this. Um, wow. I'm just amazed. You know, I, I, I really do love the people in this community because they are so nice. Just nice people who would just send me, you know, so, like, obviously this is out of print. It's hard to find for a decent price. And for him to just send it to me was, like, really, really cool. Uh, thanks, Zach, a lot. Uh, love you, dude. You're always a great member in the group page and, you know, just, just an all-around great guy. Funny guy, too. Um, so, yeah. Cemetery Man. I can't wait to watch this. I've never seen it. It needs a Blu-ray release. Really bad. Um, so, after that, we have another one of those films I grabbed at the video store, and that is uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. I've actually never seen this film, but I've heard really good things. I heard that it's really funny and stuff. Um, kind of reminded me of like Jack Brooks' Monster Hunter, just based on the cover and like the title and stuff, which I did really like. So I'm excited to check this out. This should be a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully um, it does not disappoint. After that, we have another one of those titles that I got from the uh, video store. And that is King of the Ants. I've never seen it, but uh, it looks like it's about ants, and I love insect horror films, so I'm excited. After that, we have another film. I've actually seen this one before. This is uh, from Eduardo Sanchez, I believe. And uh, this was another one I grabbed at the video store, and that is Lovely Molly. This is a good movie here, um, a lot of fun. So I'm actually interested to revisit this one pretty soon. Uh, definitely a good film. After that, we have Rosewood Lane. Um, I had seen this when it came out, and I didn't like it. I, I really thought it was bland and average. Uh, stars Rose McGowan, and it uh, is, of course, directed by Victor Salva, who we all know from Jeepers Creepers and other things. Um, $5 dump bin. I honestly grabbed it because it had a slipcover. I probably would have passed on it if it was just the DVD, but I was like, slipcover in the dump bin, $5, ah, hell, I'll give it another shot. So yeah, I don't really like this film, but I will watch it again and give it a f another fair shot. Uh, so Rosewood Lane. After that, I actually grabbed this at Walmart. Um, I think it's a slightly overpriced because I've seen it go for cheaper. But... That, that's another one of those stores where when I see horror stuff in there, I've got some I've seen Midnight titles from there for, you know, like $2 and stuff. So 
Um, sometimes when I see the titles in there, I just simply buy them because I'm at Dollar General and Dollar General is not known for selling movies. So it's like, I just get excited when I see something that I even would remotely want. Um, and I usually just buy it. So uh, I grabbed the four film favorites Draculas put out by Warner Brothers for six ninety five. And uh, this is um, Horror of Dracula. Dracula has risen from the grave. The Taste the Blood of Dracula and Dracula A.D. 1972. So, one of the reasons I grabbed this, I believe these are all ha Hammer films, but one of the reasons I grabbed this was I believe Dracula Has Risen from the Ga Grave came out in 1968. And I'm actually collecting films from that year right now, so... I'm, you know, excited to check that out because uh, that's one that uh, I need to see for 1968. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I I'm actually really excited to see all these films in general because I'm so removed from this uh, subgenre, or not subgenre, but um, the Hammer films. I, I really haven't seen any of them. So, yeah, uh, it's a cool little four pack to, you know, start out, I guess. Finally, for the DVDs, we have Stephen King's A Good Marriage. I've heard nothing but mediocre to bad things about this film. I read the book, and it was actually really good. Um, the other short story from the Full Dark No Stories was 1922, I believe, and that was a great story. I would love to make that into a film. Um, so, yeah, Good Marriage, I've heard bad things, but I'm still going to give it a shot. Ten bucks, overpaid, but like I said, it's Walmart. I just have to buy the stuff there. Um, so after that we have a Olive release, big shout out to Olive for sending me this, and um, I've actually forgot about this, that I had this, so I actually need to watch this soon and review it, but that is uh, La Belle Captive. I might have even showed this before, but I'm not sure. Um, this is a film that I know nothing about, but I will check it out soon. After that we have a film sent to me by Cult Epics. Uh, big shout out to Cult Epics. Cult Epics is one of, becoming one of my like favorite companies for just like these weird releases, like Deathbed. That was a great release. Um, but essentially, um, they release a lot of cult stuff, Cult Epics. So let's hope they continue that trend and release some more awesome stuff. So we have Necromantic 2 here, which I actually need to crack open and watch today because we're reviewing it on the podcast tomorrow. Um, never seen it, but hey. It's necromantic, it's necrophilia, and it is, you know, kind of a, a notorious film. After that, we have Chilling Visions, Five Senses of Fear. I uh, finally needed to grab this one. This was uh, a Scream Factory anthology release uh, from the Chiller Channel. I don't know why they haven't released the Five States of Fear. I hope that they do, but maybe they don't have the, maybe they can't get the rights to it or something. But I've heard good things about this one. I'm definitely excited to finally check it out. And after that, we have Ninja 3, The Domination. This was the earliest Scream Factory film I didn't have. Uh, so I finally grabbed Ninja 3. And, you know, it, I'm trying to catch up on some of these old titles that I don't have from Scream Factory. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I got this one for about 10 bucks, I believe. After that, we have Dark Angel from Scream Factory. Another title that I did not have, uh, but now I do. This one was also very, very cheap. Um, after that, we have The Incredible Melting Man, which was like $8, so I'm glad to finally have that one. Um, been wanting to check it out for a while, actually. And then we have Animal from uh, the Sci-Fi Channel. I've heard really good things about this one. We're actually going to cover this soon on the podcast as well. I had to grab this one for that reason. And, um, of course, because I buy everything Scream Factory. And finally, the last of the update, we have Lords of Illusions. Uh, this is a film that I've actually never even seen, so excited to check that one out. I know Moods is not a big fan of it. He actually told me that. I was a little bit surprised. Um, you know, it's Clive Barker and stuff, but he could be right. It might not be a good film, but I'm going to check it out and make that decision for myself. So I'll see you guys next time with another video. Um, sorry this one went on way longer than I expected. I, I kind of am used to talking for hours at a time. So peace out, guys.